Sup you beautiful people. Hope you've had a fantastic day. Welcome back to another new episode of What If Naruto Had The Omnitrix. Check out the author of the fanfiction and give them some love link is in the description. If you guys enjoy this what if, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel after watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So now let's start this video. Out by the training ground, Naruto was standing with Asmi, the Sasuke, the Kane, Sakura, and Kakashi stood eager to watch Naruto check out his new aliens. Okay, Naruto. I've unlocked 10 more new aliens for you to train with. Are you ready? Asmith inquired. I've waited 3 years to use the Omnitrix again, Asmith. You bet I'm ready. Very well. Asmith turned the dial of the Omnitrix to one selection. Naruto spoke up, hero time. He activated the Omnitrix and became the conductoid alien feedback. Hey, isn't this feedback, Asmith? He asked. Precisely, the very alien that Ben Tennyson once lost years ago before regaining it. Asmith confirmed. Sakura spoke up, feedback as you know, Naruto, is a conductoid. They're capable of assimilating and redirecting any kind of energy. And can store energy as well. Akane put in. Well, done, girls. Your plumber's history lessons truly have done well. Asmith said. So another electrical alien. This'll be good. Feedback started using electrical attacks upon targets multiple times, until Asmith spoke up. Be careful, Naruto. The conductoid needs to absorb energy from time to time to fight, because the energy contained within it will deplete with use. Feedback ceased its attacking, and asked, so when using in battle, I should make sure to recharge by feeding off anything around me that may run on electrical power. Precisely. Asmith confirmed. When the Omnitrix timed out, Naruto had waited until the Omnitrix was recharged again. Once it was powered back up, Naruto selected the next alien and transformed. The new alien had the appearance of a gorilla made out of red, yellow, and blue building blocks. Naruto looked at himself and spoke, I look like a child's toy. Your segment is sapien, Naruto, Asmith answered, or as Ben prefers blocks. So what can I do with this thing? Blocks asked, as he looked at himself. Asmith answered, the segment of sapiens can shape-shift their blocky bodies into multiple things, and are capable of breaking themselves down into multiple pieces which they can put themselves back together again. Interesting. Let me see. Blox said, as he started shape-shifting his body into a big wall, a dome, a cage, etc. Asmith continued, I should warn you, Naruto. These aliens may be capable of shape-shifting, but their bodies will break up if hit by a strong enough force. But I can still reform if that happens, right? Blox asked. Correct. Well, that's all I need to know. Blox said, as he began building himself up into other things, while Akane applauded. The Omnitrix eventually timed out, and Naruto used time to speak to his team, so how has Squad 7 been without me around? Well, Akane's been quite helpful on the team in your place. Takashi admitted. Really? Naruto asked. Yeah. With her fox senses and smell, she's been able to spot a lot of hidden enemies and intruders. Sasuke added. Oh, Sasuke. Akane replied sheepishly. Naruto smiled, I'm glad you've been able to help my team while I've been gone, Akane. I do anything for my friends. By the way now that I am back is Akane going to be removed from Squad 7? Naruto inquired, while Akane looked worried. Actually, I wanted to tell you all the Hokage has decided to make her a permanent member of Squad 7. Kakashi answered. Really? The four asked in joy. That's right. Kakashi nodded. This is great. Sakura cheered. Yes. Akane jumped up and hugged Naruto. Naruto chuckled and started to blush as he felt Akane press herself into him. When they heard the Omnitrix time back in, Asmuth called. Back to work, Naruto. Naruto nodded, as selected the third alien and transformed into an alien with a large bulky reddish-brown alien with rocky skin, a giant mouth, and a molten lava planet core at the center of his body. The hull the Galilean, or Gravitak, Naruto. Asmuth introduced him. Gravitak, huh? The new alien asked. Asmuth began explaining, these aliens are basically living planets, capable of controlling gravity. Manipulating the weight and motion of objects. Wow. That sounds neat. A word of caution, though, Asmuth continued, Galileans have taken large amounts of damage to their cores, could melt down and explode, like an actual planet. Gravitak looked shock, whoa. Takashi spoke, so you'd best make sure not to take too big hits to the torso region, Naruto. Right? Gravitak confirmed, and began breaking in his aliens' powers of levitation upon various ninja tools that his squad had on them, including Kakashi's new book. Naruto, put my book down. Kakashi ordered. You want it? Jump for it. Gravitak taunted him. Kakashi squinted his one eye and attempted to jump high enough to grab it. Unfortunately, it was too high for him to jump for it. Squad 7 laughed at his misfortune, until Gravitak finally dropped it. Never do that again. Kakashi warned him. 
Gravitak only chuckled until an idea formed. Hey, the king, Sakura, hang on. He used his power to levitate the two off the ground. We're flying. Sakura called as she moved around as if she were in the matrix. We? The cane cheered as Gravitak flew her around in a circle. Gravitak liked seeing a cane enjoy the fun and looked to Sasuke. Hey, Sasuke, instead of using weights like Lee and Gai Sensei, how about this? He extended a hand out to Sasuke who suddenly felt heavier. Hey, you think you added too much weight to me? Sasuke groaned as he struggled to move. Whoops. Gravitak said as he undid his work allowing Sasuke to move normally again. When the Omnitrix timed out, Gravitak became Naruto again. And without Gravitak, Sakura and Akane fell from mid-air and onto the ground with a thud. Okay, that hurt. Sakura groaned. Sorry about that, girls. Naruto said sheepishly. Three aliens in, and so far you're getting them down well. But we'll see if you can handle the other ones I have in store for you. As he said. I'll be ready for them. Naruto promised. And once the Omnitrix was charged up, Naruto activated it. Okay, number four, what have you got for me? He activated it, and in a flash Naruto had turned into a human-sized bug alien that looked like a mix between a grasshopper and a praying mantis. Another bug-like alien? Sasuke asked. Cool. The king cheered. So what does this thing do? Naruto asked. This is Crashipper, Naruto. An insect alien capable of jumping very high and very far. As we've explained. Is that all? Crashipper asked. Well, to top it off, Crashipper has a very hard skull stronger than a battering ram. So I can jump and bash enemies with my skull. We're good. Crashipper began as he jumped off the ground and up a nearby tree. When he got high enough he started jumping from tree to tree. This is more fun than swinging like spitter monkey. Well, nice to see him having fun. Sakura said. With strong legs like that, he should excel in kicking. Sasuke noticed. Guess we'll have to wait and see him in actual combat. Kakashi said. When Crashipper heard the Omnitrix started beeping, he landed on the ground and became Naruto again. Man, jumping that high was so awesome. Naruto laughed in excitement. Pull yourself together, kid. You got a lot more aliens to cover. Azmuth warned him. No sweat it, Azmuth, I could go on like this for hours. Naruto answered. When the Omnitrix was ready again, and my prize is, he activated the watch and transformed into a blue guana alien with a black and white shell, a blue lizard. He asked while noticing his own breath escaping his mouth, hey, I can see my own breath. This, Naruto is a polymance ardil, Azmuth began, or as Ben prefers. Wait, let me guess, the Omnitrix ninja interrupted, absolute zero. Azmuth shook his head, no. Artiguana. Oh, that's much better. Artiguana admitted. As you can probably tell these aliens are of an icy variety, Azmuth continued, they not only have the ability to breath underwater and survive sub-freezing temperatures, but they also project long-range freeze breath to freeze anyone or anything in solid ice. Pardon the expression, but cool. Artiguana said, as he started using his breath to freeze some trees. Hey, if it gets super hot we can always use Artiguana to cool down. The cane suggested. There's an idea. Sakura admitted. As we spoke to Artiguana, be careful, Naruto. If you use your ice breath too much, you'll need to catch up your breath before using it to freeze things again. So don't go overboard with the breath. Gotcha, Artiguana nodded, as he used his breath on some of the ground, turning it to solid ice. Man, if Haku could see this bad boy, he'd be impressed. Suddenly the Omnitrix timed out, and Naruto had waited it out. When it was active again, he was ready to turn into another alien, only to see his watch red noon. Oh, crap. I'm gonna be late. Late? Sasuke asked. Late for what? Sakura inquired. I promised Sonata I'd take her out on a special date. Sorry, Azmuth, but I need cut training short. Now wait just a minute, Azmuth was cut off as Naruto turned into XLR8. Gotta run. He zipped off leaving them in the dust. Oh, that boy. Azmuth groaned while laying a hand on his face. At the Hyuga compound, Hinata was waiting with her parents, until XLR8 zipped in, I'm here. Cutting your clothes, aren't you, Naruto? Hiyashi crossed his arms. Sorry, Lord Hyuga, just breaking in some new aliens and I lost track of time. XLR8 answered. Naruto Nai. Came a voice, as Hanabi ran over and hugged him. Hinata's little sister, was taller and had cut her hair shorter, and wore a tan vest jacket over her training uniform. Hey, Hanabi, long time no see, XLR8 greeted her, you sure grew. Thanks. And while you were away, look what I learned to do. Hanabi held out her hands, and Manas started surrounding them. Oh, you have the spark too. Yeah. Mom and Hinata have been teaching me how to control it. I'm hoping one day I can be strong like my sister. XLRA patted the girl's head, keep practicing and you just might one day. So, Naruto, are you ready? Hinata asked. You bet. But we better hurry, he looked to her family, don't worry, you too. I'll have her back on time. He grabbed Hinata and zipped off. 
When they reached the forest, XLR8 halted and sat Hinata down, before changing back into Naruto. Hinata looked around, what are we doing out here, Naruto? Well, this place I'm taking you is actually on another planet. And I'm taking you there in style, he pulled out a smart key and clicked a button. Suddenly the ground opened up and rising up from it was a large red circular spaceship with thrusters located at the bottom of the ship, Astro Megaship colored red. Hinata looked up in amaze, Naruto, what is this? Something mom and dad at Azmuth made for me while I was away. It's my own spaceship for intergalactic travel. Naruto explained. Can you even drive it? Hinata asked. Won't need to, I have it set to autopilot. Well, come on. He dragged Hinata on board the ship. On board, they walked around the hulls before entering the ship bridge. Hinata notices a few more command shares and asked, was this ship made to be piloted by more than one? Well, a ship needs a few people to commandeer the other controls. But if it's just me I use clones. Now let's hurry. He went to the control board and set a course. Hinata suddenly felt the ship shake indicating it was taking off. Naruto spoke as he took a seat and buckled up, better buckle up, Hinata. When this baby goes light speed it goes far. Hinata nodded and took a seat and buckled up. When the ship went high enough to exit the planet's atmosphere, it took off at light speed and zipped out of sight. It suddenly pulled to a halt above a distant planet colored green. Naruto and Hinata looked at the monitor seeing the planet, as Naruto spoke, beautiful isn't it, Hinata? It is, but what's here you wanted to show me? Hinata wondered. You're about to find out. Naruto answered, as he had the ship land on the planet. Later, Naruto and Hinata stood outside a large theme park like Disney. Hinata looked up at the sign and read from it, Ben 10 Land. She asked seeing Ben Tennyson on the sign. Yeah. This theme park was made in dedication to Ben and all those involved with him years ago. Naruto explained, perfect for our first date in three years. Well, let's go. Hinata cheered, as Naruto smiled and the two headed off. Once inside the two lovebirds checked out a lot of activities that other alien tourists were enjoying. There was riding Stinkfly where they sat inside a Stinkfly that flew round in a circle, the Nerfito's haunted house with fake Gosfriax, Frankensterk, Snero, Wampfires, and Blitzwolfers trying to scare them, the XLR8 coaster. A tour of the Forever Knights castle with aliens and others dressed as Forever Knights, Forearms Rockham, Sockham fights, show performances depicting some of Ben's greatest fights. Later the two were having lunch at a food court known as Max Tennyson's Rustica Cafe, which served all of Max Tennyson's recipes. A lot of the aliens really liked the foods there, but Naruto and Hinata stuck with having the famed Mr. Smoothie Smoothies and Chili Fries from the Ben section. Well, Hinata, how do you like this place? Naruto asked, while wearing a Ben 10 jacket he bought from the gift shop. I think this place is amazing. Hinata answered, as she was wearing a Gwen Tennyson Lucky Girl mask. Yeah. This place is the ideal vacationing spot for tourists. Naruto added, as he took a drink of his smoothie. I can see why. Hinata said, I'm really glad you brought me here, Naruto. Hey, we haven't seen each other in three years. I wanted us to do something special to make up for lost times. Well, you succeeded in that. Hinata giggled. Naruto smiled, I want this fun to last as long as it can, Hinata. I do too. Hinata agreed, as she leaned in and kissed Naruto who returned the gesture just as passionately as Hinata did. When they parted, Naruto asked, wanna check out the Circus Freak's Big Top? Sure. Hinata agreed, as they finished their lunch and took off determined to have the best day ever. The next morning after Naruto's date with Hinata, he got up and got ready before heading to the training ground to continue to learn about his remaining new stallions unlocked by Azmuth. Upon arriving at the training ground he once again found Azmuth, his squad, and Hinata as well, were waiting for him. Hey, guys. See you're here to watch me continue. That we are. Kakashi confirmed. Hinata was just telling us about your date yesterday. Sakura said. It sounded like so much fun. Akane said with envy. Well, we did have a good time. Naruto admitted sheepishly, knowing Akane would be envious about how he dated Hinata before her. Well, right enough of that, Azmuth broke it up, because you cut training short yesterday we have to pick up where we left off, making us a day behind schedule. I didn't know I had to learn my new aliens as part of a deadline. Naruto said sarcastically. Don't speak in that tone, boy, Azmuth warned him, before hovering over on his pad to the Omnitrix. He turned the dial to an alien, now continue with this alien. Naruto nodded, as he slammed down on the Omnitrix and turned into an anthropomorphic creature that looked like a rooster and a hawk. He had sharp claws on his toes and talons on his hands, as well as two larger talons protruding from his arms. He had a short beak, covered in brown feathers, and has a white mohawk. Over his face was a green mask, a green belt with a white stripe, and black underwear. On his torso was a strap vest with the Omnitrix symbol on the vest hooker. Naruto looked to himself and clucked in shock, I'm a chicken. Squad 7 and Hinata were surprised, well, that's a new one. Sakura said in disbelief. Azmuth spoke up, this breed of alien was called named Kick and Hawk by Ben. 
You'll find this alien is like many of your other aliens fast, strong, durable, and sharp with your claws and talons. Can I lay eggs in this form? Kikin Hawk asked. Let's not try that. Azmuth replied. Well, if this guy is a good hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Let's see how I do. Kikin Hawk summoned a Kikin Hawk Shadow clone, and the two went at it. The group watched the two chickens fight, as a cane called out, cockfight. The two Kikin Hawks continued to go at it, until the real one delivered a punch to the clone, causing it to go poof. Kicking Hawk let out a victory cluck before the Omnitrix timed out and became Naruto again. I hope no one ever decides to make fried chicken out of me if I use that alien in combat. Naruto feared. I'm sure it would be the first thing on their minds. Sasuke answered in sarcasm. Though I wish Kicking Hawk could fly, I mean he is bird-like. Naruto sighed. Sakura rolled her eyes. Kicking Hawk is more chicken-like, and chickens cannot fly. She's right you know. Hinata asked. Jeez. Naruto groaned. Don't worry, this next one's a real flyer. Azmuth assured him, as the Omnitrix timed back in. It is. Naruto said. Azmuth turned to Omnitrix style, see for yourself. Naruto activated the Omnitrix again and transformed. He looked like a cross between a pterodactyl and a glider. He had a beak-like mouth colored yellow, wings that were and resembled a glider, which are connected to a jetpack-like structure on his back. He had green eyes, red skin, black and green clothing on his shoulders and waist, green braces around his wrists and ankles, and yellow wings which appeared retractable. Whoa. Looks like I can fly, he said, while noticing his wings. Azmuth began explaining, this alien is referred to by Ben as Astrodactyl. He has an internalized star power, that can be used as propulsion for flight, and different forms of weapons. Neat. Astrodactyl said, as he took it to the air and glided around before opening his mouth, and released a blast of energy from it onto a tree, now that's cool. He continued to fly around to break his alien in. Azmuth called form below, but be warned Naruto. Astrodactyl is vulnerable to electricity, including lightning-based jutsu. Which means my Chidori moves can best that alien. Sasuke said smugly. Don't rub it in. Astrodactyl groaned, before using the energy in his backpack to make him shoot up further into the sky. Woohoo. The group continued to watch Astrodactyl fly around before landing on the ground and changing back to Naruto. Well, that's another to my list of flying aliens. Naruto mentally checked off. Question is who is faster? Sasuke wondered. Meh, they're all fast flyers. Naruto admitted. But this new batch of aliens you have and whatever others you still have in your watch or Chimaru, Balmark, and the Akatsuki won't stand a chance. Hinata said hopefully. Let's hope, Naruto replied. After all, I've yet to truly put these aliens to the test against the Akatsuki. Well, with your aliens and extra powered up Jinchuriki Chakra you have two strengths to combat them. Sakura noted. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Sakura Kakashi warned her, while the Omnitrix is a powerful tool with multiple alien species inside it, and Naruto may have powerful chakra at his disposal, but the Akatsuki themselves aren't your run-of-the-mill shinobi. Azmuth nodded, through Jiraiya's tabs and connections, we know the Akatsuki are all rogue shinobi throughout the land, and each of them is more unique and dangerous in their own ways. As you and Naruto have already figured out, Sasuke. Sasuke nodded, remembering Itachi among them, and how he took him down without even trying. He wasn't sure now Naruto or his alien forms could combat Itachi and his family's ocular power. But he knew if Naruto would ever be threatened by Itachi, then he would be there to help his friend out. When Omnitrix was recharged, Naruto had transformed into his eighth alien, which looked like a tall humanoid robot. His body was green and white. He had large cylinders on his arms, near his wrists, that were full of a green energy with dark green bubble-like spheres that were constantly moving on him at a mix. He had the same energy on his Omnitrix-shaped chest, a pointed head, armored helmet, and the Omnitrix symbol was on his belt. What an amazing species. Mr. Azmuth what does Ben Tennyson call this one? Naruto asked. This is Atomix, an alien capable of manipulating nuclear energy. Nuclear energy? Hinata gasped. So he's radioactive? Sakura asked. Yes, so I would advise not to get hit by any of his attacks. Azmuth warned them. I must try this new power out. Atomix called as he blasted off the ground and flew round before concentrating energy into his hands, and shouted, Hami and a Hami and a Hami and a Ha. He blasted the energy at some trees disintegrating them. Squad 7 and Hinata were in shock, what an attack. The cane gasped, as Atomix landed. Did you really have to use a chant when attacking? Sasuke asked. I felt as if it called for it. Atomix answered. Takashi spoke, well, Naruto with a hard body like that I can imagine you'd be capable of doing a lot of damage. Precisely. Adamix said proudly. After the Omnitrix timed out, Adamix became Naruto again. After waiting long enough for the Omnitrix to recharge, Azvith turned the dial. Before you transform into your ninth alien, Naruto. I should tell you this is an alien not even been transformed into. Why is that? When he never did unlock when he was my age. Something like that. But see for yourself. 
Asmuth said, as he hovered away from Naruto. The blonde shinobi activated the Omnitrix and transformed. When he came out, Squad 7 and Hinata jumped back in fright at what Naruto turned into. Naruto now stood as a tall black bipedal alien whose body structure was skeletal and biochemical. On his back were a few dorsal tubes. Its tail was large and had a bladed tip. Its head was elongated and cylindrical, and the mouth was loaded with sharp teeth. The Omnitrix symbol could be seen on the torso. The new alien made some screeching and snarling sounds while looking at himself, before looking at the others. Sasuke was the first to speak up, Naruto, no offense, but this is your ugliest alien yet. Naruto's new alien transformation even without eyes on its face, looked like it was glaring daggers at Sasuke. Suddenly he opened his mouth extending its tongue which revealed to have a mouth on it like his own. Sakura shrieked in fright, while Hinata clung to Kane. Naruto retracted its tongue into his mouth before letting out more growling and screeching sounds as if it were laughing. Sakura frowned, Naruto, that was not funny. Asmuth spoke up, Naruto, you are what the plumber's records call a xenomorph. They're known to be one of the deadliest of all known alien species. But they look like that, you can't deny it. Sasuke noted. The xenomorph looked around and started testing its abilities with using its bare strength to knock some trees down, and using its sharp claws and tail to cut them down. As the group watched xenomorph Naruto display its abilities, Akane spoke. Glad we got an alien like that at our disposal now. I know. I'd hate to have that for an enemy. Sakura agreed. When the Omnitrix timed out the Xenomorph became Naruto again, that was so cool. He cheered. Cool is right, because you don't want to expose the alien to intense heat, Asmuth warned him, and another like much like Big Chill, a Xenomorph is also capable of reproducing multiple eggs, which they sometimes use human life to lay their eggs in. Whoa? Will I have to do that? Naruto asked in worry. Only if you succumb to your Xenomorph instincts. That's a relief. Naruto sighed. So what are you going to call that one, Naruto? Hinata wondered. Naruto looked at the Xenomorph image in the Omnitrix before answering, Well, I think I'll call it Predalizard. Predalizard? Squad 7 asked. Yeah. Sounds like a name Ben would have given it. Naruto said. I won't deny that. Asbeth admitted. When the Omnitrix was ready, Naruto spoke, My tenth new alien. Let's see what you are. He activated it. Naruto's final alien looked like a tall anthropomorphic triceratops with a yellow body, and wore black pants, green space boots, and green bandoliers, with the Omnitrix symbol in the center. Over his face was a clear visor mask. Sakura and Hinata's eyes widened, as a cane spoke, Naruto, look at yourself. Naruto checked himself out, and was shocked, whoa. I'm a dinosaur. Asmuth spoke up, actually, Naruto. You're a Triceraton, an alien species that bears striking resemblance to one of your Earth dinosaurs. Wicked. Triceraton Naruto said, as he pounded his fists together seeing his last alien is strong like various others. He suddenly saw what was over his face, why am I wearing this? That's your breather mask, Naruto. Asmuth noted. Breather mask? Naruto asked. Why does he need a breather mask? Sasuke asked the Galvan. The Triceraton race live on a planet where the atmosphere is a combination of nitrogen and sulfur. Without that breather mask, Naruto wouldn't be able to breathe Earth's oxygen. So never take that off, and don't let anyone break it. You got it sir. Triceraton Naruto saluted, so what are you orders? Why is Naruto suddenly talking like a soldier? Sakura asked. The Triceratons are a soldier-like race. Asmuth explained, before looking at Naruto who was waiting for orders, Soldier, prove your worth by showing us what you can do. Sir, yes sir. Triceraton Naruto shouted, as he started attacking some training dummies with his brute strength, as well as ramming his hard head into some trees, plowing them to the ground. When Naruto finished he saluted, your opinion on my performance sir. The job, soldier. You've proven yourself to be a true soldier. Asmuth said, continuing to act like a general. I would gladly lay down my life for my village and my comrades sir. Triceraton Naruto declared, until the Omnitrix timed out, and he became Naruto again. Whoa, that was wild. Naruto said, recalling how he was behaving. So what's the verdict on naming that one? Akane asked. I've decided to go with Trihorn. Well, if that's what you want. Sasuke answered. Asmuth spoke, well, done, Naruto. You completed all 10 of your new aliens. But remember you're still able to unlock more of them just by going alien. I can't tell you for sure which ones you may end up becoming, but always be prepared for it. You got it, Asmuth Naruto nodded, oh, my gosh. I better hurry or I'm gonna be late for my date with Tenten. Tenten? Akane asked in shock. Yeah. I'll catch you guys later. Naruto said, as he ran off. Akane watched him leave looking jealous and her eyes filling up with tears. Some time later, Naruto and Tenten were in a dark maze wearing laser tag armor and holding laser tag blasters. Naruto whispered, okay, Tenten, this is it. We're going in. Tenten nodded, let's move. She whispered, as they started creeping along the maze before peeking around some corners seeing various other alien creatures playing the game as well. 
Amigo, Naruto whispered, as the two braced themselves, before Naruto spoke, go. They jumped in and started blasting at the other competitors who were running for their lives, only to get blasted and eliminated. Others who tried to fight back were missing Naruto and Tenten, who were using their ninja skills and reflexes to dodge. When Naruto saw there was only one competitor left, the two smirked at it. The last one pleaded for them not to shoot, but they did eliminating him from the game. Naruto and Tenten stood victoriously while holding their blasters above their heads. Outside the laser tag room, they were at a food court enjoying some lunch. Naruto spoke, a laser tag center in Kanoha. What doesn't this village have now? Naruto laughed. I know, Tenten chuckled, since you've been away, this village has had a lot of improvements in terms of technology and enhancements. That'll be useful in our fight against our enemies. Naruto admitted, before continuing, thanks for coming here with me, Tenten. Hey, I needed a break from my own work, and this is what the doctor ordered, she answered, plus I haven't had a date with you in three years. Yeah. There's still so much I want to catch up with everyone, Naruto said, before reaching into his backpack that he brought, hey Tenten. I wasn't able to give you this when we were at my welcome home party, but now I think is the better time. What is it? Tenten asked, as she saw Naruto pull something out wrapped in cloth. This is for you. The gift. Naruto, you shouldn't have. Open it. So Tenten unwrapped the parcel to discover it was a sword with a metallic hilt, Naruto, this is. Beautiful isn't it? It's amazing. She gasped, I've never seen a sword like this in my life. That's because it's not of this planet, Naruto explained, it was crafted using an alloy stronger than steel and titanium combined. This had to have cost a fortune. She girl said in shock. Nah, I won an awesome cocky warrior in a duel. Do I even want to know why you were dueling someone with this as a prize? Tenten asked suspiciously. The creep was abusing this weapon to make others cower and fear him, and by others I mean innocent lives who did nothing to him. So I went postal on his ass and took this from him. After that he was left with his pride damaged, and everyone no longer feared him. Bottom line, I did a planet a favor by knocking the jerk down a lot of pegs. Tenten smiled, as she marveled at the sword, with a weapon like this added to my arsenal, I could do a lot of damage. That's why I felt it was better suited for you. Naruto answered, and was suddenly embraced by Tenten. Thank you Naruto. I love it, she lifted her head up to look at him, but not as much as I love you. She smiled. Naruto smiled back, I love you too, Tenten leaned into Naruto, as their lips met. They kissed passionately, until they parted and saw various other aliens and tourists in the food court were giving them looks, can we help you? He asked rhetorically. The aliens and tourists did not respond and just went back to what they were doing. Tenten smiled at him, let's go elsewhere. Right? Naruto agreed, as they headed off to have some more fun. At the Namikaze residence one morning, Naruto was asleep in his bed until his alarm clock went off. He reached over and hit the snooze button before sitting up in bed. Ah, what a night, he stretched his arms up, before taking a whiff of the air, mm, mom's already got breakfast on. Don't wanna miss it. He got out of bed. After cleaning up and got changed, he went into the kitchen seeing his mother putting breakfast on the table, while his dad was already seated. Morning, everybody. He greeted them. Morning, Naruto. Sleep well. Minato inquired. You bet. Naruto said, as he took a seat at the table. Kashina put a bowl of ramen in front of him, eat up, Naruto. You'll need your strength. That's for sure. Now that I'm back boss and's gonna be putting me and my squad on a load of missions no doubt. Well, it'll all be good with getting you guys back into shape. Minato said. Well, you got a point. Naruto admitted, as he chowed down. After finishing his meal, Naruto was about to head out, only for Kakashi to appear by their window, Naruto. Kakashi-sensei. You're up, and meet us at the Hokage's office. We got a mission. The Jonin instructed. Be there in a jiff, Naruto answered, as he headed out the door. When Kakashi took off, Naruto activated the Omnitrix and became XLR8. He zipped off and arrived at the Hokage's office before changing back, in a jiff like I said. He went inside seeing Sasuke, Sakura, Akane, and Kakashi were there. Morning, guys. Morning, Naruto. Akane greeted him. So what's the mission, Basen? Naruto inquired. Sanade flinched, but answered, We've heard reports of some abductions happening in a town close to the Hidden Grass Village. Abductions? Sasuke inquired. Yes. Many people have been disappearing in the last week, but no one has been able to catch the perpetrators. So that's where we come in. Kakashi instructed his team. Sanade continued, You are to go there and find out whoever is doing this and find the captives. You can count on us, Sanade-sama. Sakura answered. Just leave it to us. Akane added. Then get ready and head out ASAP. Sanade finished. Hi. The group agreed, before taking their leave. After getting packed up, Naruto pulled up at the entrance of Kanoha on his green plumber's cycle that he used before when visiting the Land of Lightning three years ago. Following him was Sasuke and Sakura on their own cycles, along with Kakashi and Akane on plumber's cycles too. 
Kakashi's was colored black, and Akane's was colored silver. Everyone here. Kakashi inquired, and they all confirmed. Sensei, Akane. When did you two get plumber's cycles? Naruto wondered. I got mine two years ago. Akane answered. And I just recently got mine, even if I'm not actually a plumber. Kakashi added. Well, it's for the best that we all have these. Naruto admitted. Come on, let's burn rubber. Sasuke ordered. Right? Naruto agreed, as the five revved it up, and took off. They rode through the ninja land, before reaching their destination being the town in Kusa. They pulled up and parked their bikes. After getting off they entered the town. As they walked, they noticed multiple posters posted off displaying pictures of individuals who have gone missing. Naruto looked surprised seeing so many people missing, and thought, wonder who could be behind these disappearances. Takashi spoke, we should split up and start asking around. Let's be back here in 30. Squad 7 nodded, and split up to ask around. So each of them asked various villagers hoping to get some kind of let on who was kidnapping people, but they had no such luck. They met back at the meeting spot looking dismal. No luck? Naruto asked. Nothing. Akin sighed. I didn't find anything either. Sakura added. Same here. Sasuke replied. Let's hope Sensei has had better luck than us. Naruto hoped. Soon enough, Kakashi returned, guys, I have us a clue. Where? Sakura asked. Follow me. Kakashi instructed, as the four followed. They reached the forest area, where Kakashi stopped. He looked ahead and saw some footprints in the road heading for the forest, there's our evidence. Now we need to identify who it is and track them. Sakura said. Wolmitz got this. Naruto said, as he was prepared to transform, only for a cane to stop him. Hold on, Naruto. Let me take a crack at it. Well, okay. The cane went to the footprint and started sniffing it to get a scent. After getting a good whiff her eyes widened, as she stood up, you got a scent. Sasuke inquired. Better, I got a match. It's Tachiko. Tachiko. Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke gasped. So Orochimaru is behind these kidnappings. Kakashi said. Is the scent still strong enough to track him? Naruto inquired. Not as strong. The cane said with a sigh. Maybe Will Miss Nose can find him. Naruto said, about to activate the Omnitrix again only to be stopped by Kakashi this time. Hold on, Naruto. Seriously? How many more of you are going to stop me from going alien here? Naruto asked, while feeling annoyed. Sorry, but I have a better idea. You do? Sakura asked. Instead of following his weak trail, we'll follow him when he strikes next. Kakashi explained. A stake out. Sasuke realized. I can dig that. Naruto admitted. Then let's hurry back to the village and wait for nightfall. Kakashi instructed. The group agreed and headed back to the village to prepare. When nighttime arrived in town, Squad 7 was hiding out in different locations. Kakashi was hiding in a tree, Sasuke in an alleyway, Akane in a bush, Sakura under a bench, and Naruto was on top of a roof. Naruto looked at his Omnitrix, better go for something that can blend into the night. He activated his watch and became predalizard. He looked out and suddenly whiffed the air. Though his vision he could see the heat signature of Tachiko running into the village with his invisibility field up. Kakashi spoke into an earpiece, Akane, you smell him. Akane answered, yes. He's entered the village. Good. Remain on standby, guys. We go when he leaves. Kakashi instructed. Suddenly they saw someone wrapped in ropes in a sheet, while moving through midair. Sasuke spoke into his earpiece, there he is, he's on the move. Remember, we move when he's far away enough to not sense us. Copy that, Naruto. Kakashi inquired, only to gear growling sounds, Naruto. When Tachiko was far enough, Predalizer took off, as the others noticed. Sakura said, figures he'd go on ahead. Don't worry, we won't lose him with my nose. Akane said, as they followed along Predalizer. Meanwhile loud in the forest, Tachiko lowered his invisibility field and entered a cave with his captive. Predalizer stopped along with the others. This is it. Akane said. Alright, team. We're going in. Takashi instructed, as they went inside. Deep in the cave, Tachiko entered a chamber loaded with cages containing multiple prisoners. Watching these cages was Valmark's top hunter Ninin. Hey Ninin. I'm back, Tachiko said, as he approached and dropped his captive, and I got us another one. Perfect. With all these captives, Lord Valmark and Orochimaru will be able to create an army of amalgams to fight by our side. Ninin said. Especially if those Akatsuki creeps are set to make their move. Tachiko added. Ninin picked up the captive and removed the sheep binding him and tossed him into a cage. The hunter spoke, better contact my lord and inform him of our status. You do that. Tachiko said, as he kicked back, while unaware of Predalzard creeping in and scaling up the cavern wall. Ninanin went to the control board and was prepared to contact his boss, only for Predalzard to drop down on the monitor, startling him. The hunter jumped back as Tachiko's attention was gained. Ninanin gasped, a xenomorphia. That thing is straight nasty. Tachiko gagged. 
wait, look. Ninanine motioned to the Omnitrix symbol located on the alien. Oh, man. Not you again. Tachiko cried at Predalizard. Predalizard turned back into Naruto, Ninanine and Tachiko. Long time no see. The hunter spoke, I had my hunches you would return eventually, but your timing is rotten. And so are theirs. Tachiko added, as the two saw the rest of Squad 7 standing in the cavern entrance. Ninanine's here too. Akin gasped. Perfect. Sasuke smirked, as he drew his sword. Alright, you guys. Don't hold back. Kakashi instructed. Right? Sakura said, as she cracked her knuckles. Tachiko turned to Ninanine, a little help would be appreciated. Ninanine clicked on a control board on his arm and appearing at their side were Valmark's drones, attack. Ninanine ordered. The drones went into battle along with Tachiko, as Squad 7 joined the fight. Sasuke wielded his sword like a master, while channeling his lightning chakra through it. Hey Naruto. Watch this. My Chidori blade. He sliced through seven drones as they split in half. Naruto whistled, not bad. Sasuke is not the only one who learned some new tricks. Sakura smirked as she punched the ground sending a fissure at five drones, causing them to topple over and onto each other. Sakura, how did? Naruto gasped in shock. You can thank Sanade-sama for teaching me that. Naruto thought in worry, Sakura trained under boss and in the fields of medical jutsu and strength. She's definitely different from what she could do years ago. As Akane was using her quick reflexes and taijutsu moves alongside Kakashi, Naruto summoned a single clone, so that they could fight Tachiko and Ninanin. Tachiko and clone Naruto were engaging hand to hand, before the high-tech fighter fired his hip lasers from his belt. The clone was dodging all around, you need to work on your aim, Tachiko. Don't mock me, boy, he fired an energy shot from his palm. The clone took the blow and poofed away, yes. Got him. Tachiko cheered. Ninanin who was fighting the real one spoke in sarcasm, oh, yes. You defeated a mere clone. Tachiko frowned at Ninanin, but went to fight the others. As the real Naruto fought Ninanin, the hunter spoke, not using the Omnitrix, Naruto. Does this mean you have given up hope in the watch? Actually, I just felt like settling things the old-fashioned way for now. Naruto said before summoning 20 clones that engaged Ninanin. The hunter launched lasers and missiles, with most of the clones dodging the attacks before jumping at him with a series of punches and kicks. The real Naruto, however, had just entered his chakra mode, and using chakra arms, was molding a big Rasengan in his palm, now to try this move out on you. He propelled himself up and thrust his jutsu at Ninanin, Adama Rasengan. When the jutsu made contact with the hunter, Ninanin took the blow and was sent flying backwards and crashed into the cavern wall before falling to the ground. Ninanin's armor was dented with most of his blasters crushed. He looked back and saw his squad was going through the drones with no difficulty, and Kakashi was fighting Tachiko with no problem either. Even if the high-tech spy was using his invisibility field. Now to free the captives. He activated the Omnitrix and became Firearms. He summoned multiple clones that each went to a cage and broke it open. Hurry. Get out of here. Go. And so the captives made a break for the exit without looking back. Tachiko seeing this panicked, no. Ninanin, our captives are, he saw Ninanin was down for the count, and multiple forearms had started surrounding him. Beams up, Tachiko. Firearms said. Tachiko smirked, for today. He back flipped over them and landed by Ninanin, but will be back another day. He activated a teleported, and both he and the hunter were beamed out. Firearms dispelled his clones before he became Naruto again, I almost missed those two. Let's get out of here. Kakashi suggested, and they left. But not before they rigged the cave with paper bombs to make the cavern cave in so Tachiko and Ninanin wouldn't use it again. As they returned to the town, Naruto spoke to his squad, so Orochimaru and Valmark are looking to make more amalgams. Looks that way. Kakashi answered. I doubt any of those captives who'd be spliced with alien DNA would fight alongside them willingly. A cane voiced up. Unless the two threatened them, or brainwashed into serving them. Sasuke added. Whatever the case, at least we stopped them here. Sakura said. You had Naruto nodded, before walking closer to Akane, say, Akane. Yes Naruto. I was thinking, when we get back to the village. Would you want to catch a movie with me? Akane's eyes widened, you mean go out on a date? Of course. Naruto confirmed. Yes. She cheered excitedly, while the rest of the squad looked at her awkwardly. In Orochimaru's lair that very night, Tachiko and Ninanin presented themselves before Orochimaru and Valmark with Kabuto and Dr. Kilatron at their respective sides. What? Naruto has returned Valmark shouted. That's right. Tachiko winced. And you not only failed in the perfect opportunity of capturing both him and Sasuke, but you let them get away with the prisoners. Orochimaru asked in disappointment. The boy has much improved in his fighting prowess even without usage of the Omnitrix. Ninanin explained. Silence. Valmark barked, as the two backed up in fright. When Valmark and Orochimaru calmed down, the former Sanin spoke, no matter. We've still got plenty of prisoners from what the Sound 5 have acquired beforehand to use in our experimentation. But be warned, you two. 
Fail us again and we will turn you over to the five. They've become bored with little sport. Falmark finished. Yes, masters. The two bowed their heads in humility, before taking their leave. Kabuto spoke to his own master, so Naruto has returned after all this time. It was inevitable. Kilotron said to Valmark. Indeed, Valmark agreed, and now that he has returned, and the Sakasuki organization set to make their move. We're gonna have to play our game very carefully. Orchimura nodded, and there's still the matter of acquiring Sasuke so I can take his eyes for my own. And so you shall. But for now we need to focus on the matter at hand. Valmark reminded him. Orchimura snickered, yes. A day passed after Squad 7's mission, and Naruto was currently on his date with the cane at the movies. In the theater, the two sat close together, while Naruto was wearing sunglasses, and a hoodie with the hood up. Akane looked over at Naruto and thought, I still have no idea why Naruto's dressed like he's undercover. Soon enough the movies started, and the moviegoers watched seeing it was the new Princess Gale movie taking place in the land of the snow. For a while Naruto and Akane watched with enjoyment, until Akane saw who else to show up on screen, but Naruto himself. Her eyes widened, as she looked at Naruto who looked back at her. The alien fox girl whispered, Naruto, you. Tell you afterward. He whispered back. Akane nodded and sat back to enjoy the film with her date. Throughout the movie the footage of Naruto fighting was jaw-dropping and action-packed awesome. The ending the movie was of Naruto and Princess Gale, who was revealed to be Princess Koyuki standing on top of a grassy hillside close to a heat generator. It cut to the credits, and the audience cheered and applauded. Naruto and Akane left, while Naruto made sure not to let his face be shown by anyone in the theater. When the two got far enough from the place, the blonde removed his shades, and pulled his hood down, glad to get out of there. Naruto, you were in the movie, Akane gasped. Yeah. Sorry I didn't give you a heads up. I wanted it to be a surprise. But how did this happen, and when? She inquired. This was during my three year absence. Yurosanin and I were traveling for the snow country, and we sort of got caught in the middle of the filming and such. Turns out there was more going on than what anyone knew. He explained. What do you mean? The alien girl tilted her head. The plot of that movie was literally a hundred percent real. Wait so she was actually the rightful ruler of the land. A cane asked, and that stuff about her uncle, her father, everything. Right down to her learning to feel emotion and love again. Naruto smiled. Naruto, you literally just helped her store order to a whole country. Akane said in amaze. I did it once, and I did it again. Naruto chuckled. Akane pulled him into an embrace, you're my hero. She pulled him into a kiss, which he returned. When they parted, Naruto smiled, being a hero does have its perks. The two laughed. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.